But we gotta move kind of quickly because the bin police don't like when I film in here. We are looking for, see, we don't want that. We want one with the, there we go. The latches that kind of reach around and, and snap like this so the snake can't push it up from the bottom. This one's gonna be a really fun one. We have some surprise guests. Take your shirt off. <laughs> and a bioactive build that is for everybody. My name's Alex. Welcome back to Leafy Street. Let's make a budget bioactive enclosure for a Solomon Island ground boa. Not this, this is a, it's a, th oh, this guy here. Isn't he cute? Let's do it. We got the drill stuff. So I don't have a jigsaw, so I'm gonna have to use a drill to carve out the top ventilation area. It's not ideal, but we gotta do what we gotta do. What is this? Oh ho! Jackpot. All right, I'm keeping this. We got a poker chip in here. That actually might be the thickest I got. Okay, this is important. I'm actually gonna measure things out for once. Because although this is a budget build, I don't want it to look that bad. Looks pretty good. A little bit further back. Oh, my roommate's making coffee. I really hope I have a jigsaw. This is gonna take forever. Oh, thank God. Found a jigsaw. This came out like complete garbage, but I am not worried. This is gonna be covered up with mesh and we're gonna be able to hide all of our mistakes. There we go. There we go. There's not really a ton of rhyme or reason to how many holes you're supposed to put. I like to do maybe 12 or so on each side. So in hindsight, I probably should have done this a little bit higher up to account for the substrate. So I think maybe these first two are gonna be mm, possibly under, under the substrate, but these will be above. I drilled a couple extra. I think we're good. Let's get this thing cleaned up. There we go. Nice. Sweet. All right, now we are ready to give this lid a go here. We're using a bit of mesh, and then we have a hot glue gun. Not very high tech, but it gets the job done. At this stage, you want to leave a little bit hanging over the edge. That'll make sense in a bit. Eh, not that much. A little bit less. Okay, so first thing I'm doing is I'm putting two dots of hot glue on each side of the mesh here. This is gonna anchor us in place, and the first two are the most important. Now that we got this side in, you want to pull it super, super tight. All right, got glue on this side. No, oh, don't fail me now, girl. Come on. You don't have to hold that one there. Sweet. Okay, so now that that's in place, I'm just gonna duct tape. Guys, this is real simple, not crazy stuff. This is a budget build. We want function here. We want cheap prices. This is looking pretty good. I want to add a little bit of glue just on this like inside rim. Trust the process. I think this is gonna look awesome. So my closet is an absolute nightmare, but it has everything that I could possibly need for this. For substrate, we're gonna try to make a basic ABG mix that stands for Atlanta Botanical Garden. That's the place where it's invented. It's proven to be a blend that plants absolutely love, so we're gonna do our own spin on it. Keep in mind, this isn't the exact blend that they use. It's an experiment. It's pretty close, and I think it will get the job done, but if it doesn't go well, you'll be the first to know. Well, you'll be the... Third to know. This is just tap water, but it is dechlorinated, which I feel like is, is good for our cleanup crew. Snakes don't seem to mind either way though. Breaking up all the clumps. I mean, you can let this just kind of do its own thing. You give it enough water, or you could help it along and you get to play with some dirt. Holds a lot of water. It's great for high humidity reptiles. This smells like the jungle. It is so, so nice. Get this thing mixed up. Oh, look at that. I feel like I kind of want to put a little bit more bark, give it some structure. We are about ready to plant. Just gotta, where's my, oh. This, I need this. Wait, do I need to, do I need to rinse these? Yup, I need to rinse these. All right, everyone stay calm. I was hoping to use heat tape for this build. I don't have any cabled up, so I'm gonna use a heat pad. Also don't have a clean heat pad. So I gotta go buy one. It's gonna be a little bit of a hit to our budget. I'm fine with buying this as long as it's not like $32.99 or something crazy. Oh, okay. All right, well, we don't have a choice. I don't even really like heat pads, so this one kind of hurt. 
but we gotta do what we gotta do. I don't really feel like cabling heat tape right now, so we're gonna make this work. In hindsight, I probably should have done this before. Got a pro. Oh man. Oops. Well, I picked this tub specifically because it had a really nice flat bottom, just in case we had to use a heat pad or heat tape, and I'm glad I did that. Okay, so really important. Notice how there's kind of a slope to the drainage layer. This is the heat pad side here. I want the substrate and the drainage to be as shallow as possible. We don't want the temperature to get too high and melt the plastic, so we need the substrate to be thin so the thermostat reaches the temperature it's supposed to without having to try too hard. Now, if you remember the hole we made here earlier, that's about to come in handy. Not even close. That is for our temperature probe. Temperature probe is in. So we want it as close to the pad as possible. So I'm gonna be putting it right here. It's gonna be buried, but it'll make more sense in a second. So you can see that probe in there, using that rock to hold it down. So I basically just use this other rock to create this, this little den, basically. We want this little warm place that Zephyr can be, where there's a pretty thin amount of substrate. We want him to be able to get as close to the heat pad as possible. My parents actually came to visit. I brought them with me to my favorite plant store. And in the spirit of this being a budget build, I bought plants that were only on the sale rack. They're all perfectly healthy, they just don't, I mean, some of them just don't look quite as good, but I got them all for under $25, so that's a huge win in my books. I'm gonna use bromeliads because they hold humidity extremely well and they also hold water. Kendo, I love a good drink. I noticed Zephyr drinking out of his bowl and droplets off the glass as soon as the lights turn out. And of course, I'm gonna throw in a pothos. I think they'll grow really well. I can vine them. It'll give them lots of cover and places to climb. It is finally time to start planting and I am very excited. Everyone knows this is my favorite step in the whole process. Nothing wants to do than to just start Tossing in our substrate. This trash pile is getting disrespectfully large, but I've got something we need in here. So my dad actually brought a couple of sticks from my house that I grew up in, because we live on some property. So these are just maple. They are pre-baked. Always want to bake them, sanitize them. And these are good to go and ready to include in our setup. I want to give them plenty of places to climb. I also want to support the plants. I also want to make a cool composition. This one here should offer a bit of climbing area and get sort of closer to the basking spot. Can even kind of perch up here. They all move a little bit, which is fine. That's what nature would do. But they're sturdy, which is really what we care about. I think this is this is pretty good. I'm slightly worried about this bromeliad. It's like, I mean, it's obviously too tall to fit in here, but I think if I kind of plant it at an angle like this, that should be okay. And if it dies back, honestly, like it's gonna slowly decompose and get eaten by the cleanup crew, and it's just part of the cycle. That's life, but I think it should be okay. I'm gonna use some of the substrate that's in here because this is Josh's Frogs ABG. It's good stuff. I don't wanna waste it. I won't be able to vine it. Yeah, this is gonna be awesome. And I was really not sure where to put this guy here. So pretty. I think that's in a great spot there. As I make more of these builds, I know I'm gonna sound like a parrot repeating myself over and over again. Yes, right. But leaf litter and cleanup crew are absolutely vital for a bioactive setup. I've got these really cool big jackfruit leaves and then just a regular old handful of oak litter and that's gonna be perfect. And for isopods, I've got the powder orange, which you guys know I love. They're extremely hardy. They breed like maniacs and they do really good work. Now I've got this mystery species that I thought was Theracal. I'm wrong, there's some sort of porcilio, I think. I just don't know the second word. Chime in, I'm always down to learn. And of course, spring pills. They look like jasmine rice. They're absolutely tiny and they do incredible work. I like to let the setup sit for at least two weeks before adding the animal. This will let the plants root themselves and let the cleanup crew get established. This is Tim, say hi to Tim. He's got Penelope out. I think she's about to be, she's definitely in shed. You can see how dull her colors are. She's like a living fitness tracker. How'd you Penelope, sleep? what's my heart rate? <laughs> how long did I sleep? Today is finally the day we get to add Zephyr. Just grab some of the wood from his old enclosure here. In the spirit of this being low budget, we're gonna recycle as much as possible. Just want to make almost like a bit of a basking platform for him here and get up nice and high to the light if he wants. You ready, buddy? I gotta get him out of here first. You can see he's very nervous right now. This is a brand new place. Hesitant here. Very, very slow. It's all right, man. It's all good. I'm gonna shut the light off to give him a little bit of privacy. Just reduce his stress level a bit. Good night.
We just hit 250 subs and it is absolutely unbelievable to me. For like a year, it felt like I was yelling down an empty hallway. Now it kind of feels like there's a little group of people down there. And it's pretty cool. And it's all because of you. So thank you so much. And I'll see you soon. Yeah. Peace. Oh.